Hello everyone. Many people have been wondering about our performance album and how a robot works. And in this video, we'll be answering all of these questions. wondering, if we have a solid back wall, how, does it have, how is it flexible enough to let the triple loops apart? Well, we use a compliant mechanism, and we learned this from Mark Rober's video about compliant mechanisms. For example, how do you even store energy to fire a dart with no mechanical springs? Well, here was the first prototype, and while it's still more than one part, you can see the clever way the springs were replaced with a few new parts that stored energy by being flexible. In engineering, we call that a compliant mechanism. And I happen to know. If we take off the intake, we can show you how our back wall works. As you can see on our back wall, we use plastic sheets here to act as a spring force for the back wall to move back and forth. The reason why we use plastic sheets and not rubber bands is because plastic sheets are a lot looser and they can also be tuned a lot easier. As you can see, um, our back wall is really bendable and can be moved back and forth really easily with this compliant mechanism on our back wall. Compliant mechanisms are cool. If you want to find out more, you can look at Mark Rober's video about the world's smallest Nerf gun. Link in the description. Another feature is our drivetrain. We have an arch and angles to help the drivetrain climb over the bar. This first rank, a ramp on our drivetrain, allows uh, the bar uh, to get over uh, the first tire. Uh, this ramp is a very, uh, very a gradual ramp and uh, required a lot of fine tuning because uh, before our PTO allowed us to have more motors. But after switching into six motors, the robot went all over the bar easily, and the ramp did not have to be so precise anymore, but we still kept it as it was most efficient. After that, the slope after the tire allows the robot to move through the middle part or tipping part of the robot. Now all the back tires need to do is push the robot over the tipping point and let it fall into the supply zone. After, uh, when it falls into the uh, supply zone, uh, these uh, front tires pull the robot forward, and uh, we also have uh, this uh, back a slope here uh, to make sure that uh, the bar gets over uh, the back tire. Uh, also, since the PTO is at the back and powering uh, directly to the uh, back tires, uh, the back tires have enough power at the, uh, so that uh, when the bar goes down to the ramp, uh, the back tires have enough power at the Something else is that we have separate pistons on each side of our purple scoring mechanism so we can score more accurately and precisely the amount of cubes we want to score in a goal. Uh, we also still do have our corner scoring system, however it is um, smaller and tighter and only used for skills. The final and arguably most important part of our robot is our PTO system. Our PTO system works when we have four motors from here, from the intake, switching over to the dumper. This made our full park work really well and consistently. 
In order to dump, we have to move the dry piston to the intake and the intake piston to the dumper. This means when our uh, dumper is moving upwards, our intake will also move. Uh, some uh, important thing that we found with our PTO system is since uh, our PTO is made with uh, uh, with pistons moving a gravity gear, uh, uh, we found that uh, that if you spin it in one way, it will skip, but in the other way, it will engage. So that is why if our robot outtakes, it will skip often. It is a demonstration of our PTO uh, system. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we got rid of all of the uh, support here, so uh, you can easily see into our PTO system. So uh, firstly is uh, this cylinder here, which switches from our drive to our intake. Uh, as you, you can see here, uh, uh, this bottom gear basically uh, powers to all of our uh, drivetrain systems, and uh, the gear on top here powers to our intake systems. Uh, as you can see right now, uh, that piston is extended, meaning that it is a six motor drive. Uh, oh, let me turn on our intake, but this piston will uh, retract. Uh, so uh, the intake is turning right now, but in order uh, to score our cubes, uh, we need to engage uh, this to our uh, elevator system. So as you can see here, uh, when we touch our scoring mechanism, uh, this I'll, uh, I'll, I'll connect uh, the two systems, making the elevator go up. Uh, to switch back to our six motor drive, uh, this piston uh, I will disconnect, and uh, this piston here I will um, move the motor power down to our uh, drive train. With all the features on our robot, we shared it off pretty well. Right? For the bottom left, bottom right, excuse me, they, oh, that is so many. Uh, one main problem has our PTO. Uh, one problem in our PTO is that we found out that uh, the way that we hit our PTO had a lot of cantilever gears, uh, making it so that the holes in the PTO could wear out. As you can see here are some of the pieces from our PTO wearing out. These caused our gears and our PTO system to skip. This also made us a loose power transfer on our whole system. On our intake, we had friction on the rollers themselves. We had friction on the chain that's connected to the rollers. We also had friction on our PTO system. And all of the little friction added up to decrease the amount of torque on our intake, which is why we downgraded from a 4.5 to 1 on our Tetris 1 to a 3 to 1 on our Tetris. Also, our intake makes the signature squeaking sound of friction. Because of the friction in our system and also the wearing out of the pieces in our PTO, which we found out on each of qualifications, we weren't able to consistently code supplies though, costing us a lot of points. But after we found out this problem and solved the issue, we were, our scores drastically went up, but it was already too late to catch back up. Uh, uh, one question that uh, we uh, received often after Worlds was if Tetris 1 uh, could do better uh, than Tetris Pro. Well, the answer is no. Although Tetris Pro was unable to consistently through the supply zone in our first five qualification matches, after what well, Coco said, after we changed the piece out and replaced the beams, we were, we were then able to clear the supply zone, although it was, took 35 seconds. What we found out during the competition is that we spent a lot of time modifying our robot and we didn't have enough time to test it. After we reverted all our changes, we found out that we were able to consistently score higher. Although it took a huge risk this year by implementing a full park on our Tetris Pro robot, our goal for each season is to complete all the tasks, even the hard ones, which this year was full park. Um, our end goal is always to strive for innovation and not always to win. One final thing to note is that when we do something that we never tried before, although it may enhance our performance greatly like what happened last year, we also it's hard to see the unforeseen impact, which we learned this year. Thank you for sticking with us throughout the season. We hope you learned a lot from our videos. And for the last time this season, press the LS button to like and subscribe.